we are fortunate tonight to have with us Representative Christine Consett. She is here tonight, and Christine, you may have your opening statement. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Everybody, you can just call me Christy because I often get confused even though we don't look anything alike with Christy Nome. It's just easier to call us all Christy. So I want to thank you for having me here tonight, especially Dale for allowing me just a little bit of leeway as I was out of town on a family vacation for the last 10 days trying to recruit, recoup from my session uh, with my family reconnecting. I'm Kristen Consett. I am from Rapid City. My husband and I, Stephen Consett, he is the president of Wells Fargo Bank, have lived in Rapid City for over 18 years. We have a daughter, Catherine, who is in the sixth grade at St. Elizabeth Seton School. She's in middle school, so it's been quite a transition. A little bit about myself and what I've done. I have to actually go on the Alan Solano train with, I was also appointed as was Speaker Gosh. There seems to be some turnover in that area, but we've been around for quite some time. I've been served five years, and in that five years, I have upheld what I believe are the rights of South Dakotans to business ownership, gun rights. I've received A pluses from the NRA, from Right to Life. Another few things that I've enjoyed being in District 32, which I've lived in all the years that we have been here, is getting to know the people and understanding that the people that I represent at times are not of the same party, but I'm willing to sit down and listen as there are people in my same party that we are certain times I have and Dale will attest to. We've had long discussions over different issues, um, some of those being Republican issues and us doing some counseling at certain times on both halves. So I'm so grateful to, have you, uh, to be here this evening and next question. Well, thank you, Christy. Yep. And, uh, so, our first question for Representative Consent tonight, what is the basis of your moral compass and how will that influence what you decide is best for your constituents and the citizens of South Dakota? The base of my faith and my moral compass, being a fourth generation South Dakotan, uh, business owner, my family, as my great-grandfather built the Capitol, my other great-grandfather was in the Senate. And so I have a very strong tie to peer, but yet I don't perceive peer as bewitching, as some people like to propose that it is. It's a person doing a job. It's a man wearing a suit. It's a woman putting on a suit and going to do a job every day to represent the state of South Dakota. We've been called out here tonight for certain bills and certain things that we have done on just general topics. We've never, uh, nobody's ever investigated the thoroughness of the bill or the uh, amendments that were brought to the bill. We've just been brought out on certain things. So my moral compass is my faith, my family, the people that I represent, and then we always have to throw in there forgiveness. There has to be forgiveness because we are humans. So thank you, Dale. Your question is um it was a very emotional question that appeared this year. Representative Consett, HB 1183, the repeal of the death penalty, was a highly emotional bill in the 2014 session. It was killed on a close vote of 76 in the House State Affairs Committee on which you sit. The FHA action was neutral on this bill, and we have been told that it will be back in the 2015 session. What are your thoughts on the repeal of the death penalty in South Dakota? Well, Dale, as you can t attest to, and everybody else here can attest to, to see my voting record on uh, the LRC website, I have always voted to uphold the death penalty. But as a Christian, I have always had internal battle. We have those arguments. This is government intervening to kill somebody. But yet we, as a Republican Party, say a life is a life is a life, from conception to death. There, there, it goes back and forth. And so Dale, under his counsel, and we had a conversation about it, um, this was my hardest bill. I left that committee after a mother whose son was shot and killed here in Rapid City at the bakery. I took her in a back room, and we were alone in that same committee room, and I said, I need you to tell me, he, uh, well, I need to tell you, here's why I voted this way. And she goes, well, you were always for the death penalty. And I said, here's my inner struggle. I'm a human being. I'm a Christian. I believe in life. And she and I sat back there for roughly an hour and a half. 
And I, we were bawling, we were holding hands. I finally said at the end of the conversation, you please tell me, what were the last words your son said to you before he left that morning? And I'm not gonna share those with you because that's her story to tell. But it was a very hard vote. And it was on State Affairs Committee, which I'm a majority uh, whip, and I knew that I was gonna have to take that vote. But it's something that I struggle with. I think as we all struggle with demons, be it gambling or you know votes, I will never let go of my morals or, va or values, but I do know that when it comes to that issue, I struggle. There are certain people that can never be reformed. You hear the story today on the news of a man that is just sentenced to death because he uh, took advantage of an 11-month-year-old girl. That person will never be reformed. That is evil on this planet. So I, I, please, I beg your forgiveness. Um, it is something I will always struggle with. Thank you. Let's say, President Council,